Hello everyone, my name is Qi Tingfang. First of all, I'd like to ask, have you ever been scammed? Can you raise your hand if you have? It seems like lots of people got scammed. <laughs> so do you know that phone calls are the most common scam mechanism when compared to other contact methods? And nearly 50% of all calls in the US are, all, are scam calls. And nearly 60 million Americans have lost money from a phone scam in the past year. It is in view of this horrifying statistic that I present my thesis, Smells Like Scam, Design Strategy to Fight for Fighting Back. First, I review a variety of scam reports to find out who is most vulnerable to phone scam and why these people are particularly susceptible. The data show that, contrary to popular belief, younger adults lose money to scammers much more often than older people do. Deeper examination of this age group revealed that the average age of new immigrants in the US is 31 years old, which is right in the middle of the young adult group that is most susceptible to being scammed. Statistics show that new immigrants are indeed more vulnerable to falling for scams, and my own research and failed research echo this trend when I ask a sampling of young new immigrants why they felt compelled to truthfully respond to such call. Typical answer were, I felt intimidated. They seemed official. They seemed to know personal details about me. And I felt I'm I felt afraid of being punished, and I wanted to please the person I was dealing with. And in view of what is, for them, still an unfamiliar social and legal environment, it is reasonable that they would fall prey much more readily than others. I make a system map to trace what's behind the scam. And I started to comprehend the massive preparations scammers make before calling. The shockingly low degree of new immigrants' awareness stands in stark contrast to scammers' high degree of preparation, tipping the scale strongly in favor of scammers' success. By designing for this overlooked and underserved group, we can help reduce the possibility of being scammed for all. The following products of design are the implements to help recent immigrants avoid phone scams before, during, and after it happens. So how might we raise phone scam awareness before it happens? A recent immigrant, Jennifer, said, I never pay attention to scam news. Even if I read it, I won't remember it. Identifying legitimate and reliable sources of information is very challenging for newcomers to the US, meaning that the scam alerts often fall for deaf ears. According to a study, word of mouth is the second most effective way of learning about scams. What if there were a more formalized but still interactively word of mouth method of obtaining reliable prevention information? With this in mind, I have designed Scam Booth, an interactive experience that explores the nature of phone scam and sparking the tricks behind, behind them. The experience requires two participants, one of whom plays the role of the scammer, the other a potential victim. In order to stimulate a realistic calling environment, either can see the other but both are allowed it to speak different languages as the real scammer, like many of the immigrants they scam, are often multilingual. There are corresponding instructions in the scam booth on both sides. The participant playing the scammer prepares a scam script, which helps they understand how scammers phrase their story. The participant playing the potential victim only needs to waste the scammer's time, which gives them time to hear the scammer flesh out their story. Scammers often become impatient with such callers as their time is better spent with easier victim. Some immigrants who pass it by also actively share their stories with us, 
they were very emotional as the experience of being scammed is clearly deeply affecting. And as you can see, even the dogs hate phone scams. <laughs> One unexpected and disappointing participant conclusion was that there is no practical way to block scam calls even after I download the blocker ad. And this, it was this statement that guided the design of my second project. How might we spot a scam when it happens? Normally, we look on our phone and see the scam likely prompt, and then we hang up. This type of scam are easy to spot, and the trigger are those that use technology to confuse people. A police officer remind me that the people who got scammed are not dumb. Scammers are effective because they are so professional and have strong technical support. What if the scammer pretends to be calling you from a government agency and that the caller ID is correct, as shown on an official website? How could an immigrant possibly identify such a caller as a scammer? I designed a plugin named Call Detector. Through data analysis, Call Detector identifies scam scripts in instant calls. When receive, receiving an unfamiliar call, the user clicks the scam detect, and a verbal notification will inform the caller that the call will be recorded. At this point, the scammer is likely to hang up because getting through the scam detect user will be more trouble than it worth. Once a suspicious conversation is detected, the system generates a pop-up notification. After multiple pop-ups, the system will automatically end the call. It also provides informative detection results to explain why the call is a scam. The plugin also prevents future calls by showing details of scam indicators. Because it is an iOS plugin, it is easy for a non-native speaker to set their language while still detecting multilingual scan scripts. User feedback has been positive. It is not only telling you about the call, but it is also letting you know for future calls. After understanding why it was a scam from the result, one of the users suggested taking a step further. The app could be made to report the call and track down scammer behind the number, which leads us to the next stage of my project. So what should we do after we receive a scam call? We should all report the scam call we receive. Collecting data on reported scam calls will further assist in accurate and fast tracking of scammers and scam trends. I designed Trace, an information exchange platform to help immigrants to track the common scam trends. User can view recent scam trends and learn more on the homepage. It, and they can also check other people's report information and learn about specific situations other people have experienced. And in order to achieve these levels of reliability and effectiveness, Trace needs active participants to share every single time they have an experience with a scammer. Unfortunately, most people don't think it is important to report every scam call they receive. Data from FTC, the main agency for collecting scam reports in the US, shows that there's a huge gap between the number of people who have been scammed and the number of reports on such scams. Every report helps complete the picture of what scammers do because multiple hits can be traced back to a single scammer and only then can further action be taken. Federal agency cannot investigate individual cases as well. I have designed a campaign inviting people to report scams. Posters advertising this campaign will be placed at the airport, on the street, and in a subway station. The QR codes on the poster will lead people to instruction about how to file their scam report. 
question about the kind of scam it was. And will, of course, collect more details and evidence about their particular situation. And after submitting the report, user can view follow-up investigation on their profile page. And after designing for the de corresponding solution in these three steps, I realized that scammers are easy, can easily hack the digital system by using technology. That's why we have no way to fundamentally solve the problem. I started to wonder, in the future, might there be a better tool for intercepting scam calls with confidence? I envision a futuristic, utopian, zero scam call world. Everyone's cell phones need block authentication to ensure real identity. I realize that one of the more surprising challenges immigrants face is identity verification and shift. So I started to research, how can we authenticate identity for a more reliable and unhackable source? One notable tidbit from the history of phones are the auto tones used by grounded and landline, like the dial tone. What really caught my interest was this sound. The sound of dial-up modems and how the sound made the connections between a computer and the internet. I discovered that phone freakers in the 1980s actually used these unique tones to make otherwise expensive long distance calls worldwide for free. They were able to explore the, the way telephones make connection and no telephone company could stop them because dial-up tones are unhackable. That inspired me to design Cypher, a speculative device that emits auto tones that are encrypted, and as I will show, and be used to authenticate calls made by legitimate businesses like banks, government offices, insurance companies, etc. Hello, this is the IRS. May I speak to Danica? Yes. You have an error on your tax return. What should I do? Can you provide your social security number? I can check it for you. Okay, uh, my social security Countless number. imposter scams specifically target vulnerable immigrant populations. Introducing Cypher, an intelligent device that helps you authenticate the caller. Every Cypher device has its own serial tone and is encrypted before being played out. Since the encryption method constantly changes, the tone will be played with a different sound, making it impossible to be hacked. When this encrypted tone is propagated through the phone, the device on the other end can decrypt its serial tone. If this tone matches the one in the database, Cypher will light up blue. Can you provide your social security number? Can you play a Cypher first? Now, you can confidently continue the conversation. Cypher makes the invisible scammer visible. Since the government authorities and well-known companies will hold a critical tone emitter, the consumer cypher device can be freely distributed and will provide another layer of safeguard for immigrants against scam calls. I hope that in light of this fraud fact, you will pick up these design tools and join our fight against scams, even for, no, especially for the overlooked and underserved immigrants. Thank you. Ting, thank you so much for going first yeah, today. You. That's tough. Thank you for also being an extraordinary uh, classroom assistant for this class presentation. Uh, it was so helpful to, um, all of the classroom uh, classmates and to me as well. Uh, I'm also should mention, you know, I love your focus on new immigrants because I, as you, I think you know, I'm a new immigrant or about mm -hmm. to end being an immigrant, uh, passed my citizenship interview and test and waiting for my uh, swearing in ceremony. So hopefully next next month, after 36 years of being here from Canada. Mm -hmm. I was so excited in the beginning of the class um, in September because you had chosen such a small uh, thesis topic of scams and I think it started with phone scams um, and as for anyone who's ever done any kind of project in their lives um, starting small is like a really hard thing to do and a great thing to do. How did you, why did you choose that in the beginning? Well, um, because like, uh, 
last year when I first came to the US and I noticed that myself got lots of phone scams and also my friends around me who also got a lot and I just discovered that uh, this is a big issue in the US and we're so vulnerable because like we my English not that well at that time and also my friends and um, I just I just afraid of being scammed so in it's such a for you. yeah as in such a unfamiliar environment. Yeah. I want to ask you about what happened in um, the Union Square. Um, a couple of the, your favorite inter interactions that happened in your scam booth. Yeah, and the scam booth experience was um, very interesting. I remember that there's a guy that I've talked with, and in our conversation, he just got a, a call and I was just asking, is that a scam? And he was just like, hello, are you a scammer? <laughs> but no, that, that was his uh, wife. But, <laughs> but it's, it's really funny, yeah. Um, and also, uh, like, uh, in that experience, I learned a lot uh, from different people because I, because that experience was in the public and in the Union Square, there was lots of people there. And I learned different signs to help me um, away from phone scams. Mm -hmm. And I think that's super important and I really appreciate everyone who participated in that experience. Oh, that's so nice. Speaking of wives, my wife Victoria is here and I know that one of the things she does when she gets a scam call, is she says, hello, hello, hello. Hello, and it makes it makes the scammer pretty nuts. Yeah. And, and sometimes they hang up, and sometimes they say kind of rude things. And maybe you can interview her at the at the break. Does that yeah. sound good? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Ting. Thank you.